Hello, I am Mrs. Abstract, and today I'm going to teach you art. We are going to learn how to draw a man. First thing you do is make a circle. Then you make the body. Then we can't forget the arms. And the last thing you will draw is the legs. And there's how you draw a man. Mom, you forgot the face. <laughs> Clearly, I need some help. Hi guys, Casey with the Hobbs Crew here today. And if this is you, then we can be friends because this is me. I don't know about you guys, but I have struggled with art my entire homeschool career, mom career because I can never get it right, actually. So this year, because I have so many artsy kids, I determined that I was going to do something about it. And that's when I found this book, The Art Treasury. It's by Rosie Dickens and it's published by Usborn. It is truly a treasure, pun intended, um, and I have just been thrilled with what we've been doing with it. And my artsy and non-artsy children love it. So what is Easy Art? Easy Art is a unit study that I have written for all 20 of the artists featured in the Art Treasury book. Each lesson has a YouTube video link to go along with the lesson, as well as some discussion questions. Nine of those lessons have bonus activities that you could do with your child just to make it a little bit more memorable. This unit study is geared for elementary, middle school, and high school students. Your high school student could use it as a foundation for an art history elective. I did include my preschoolers in it. They just joined us on the YouTube videos and they also joined us with the project. Sometimes they can do the project, sometimes they can't. Sometimes they do an abbreviated version, if you know what I mean. So, how do you teach it? I've divided the lesson plan into three days, with the optional activities being on the fourth day, if that's what you choose to do. Those are bonus activities that can add to the, to the lesson if you'd like. However, first thing you're going to do is you're going to read about the artist. We're going to be using this book. It's called Art Treasury. And we're going to be looking at different paintings and um, the artists themselves, okay? So today we're starting with the painting, The Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. Okay, so Ooh. I'm going to read, this is the, ah. this is the painting, okay? This is awesome. So let me read this to you, okay? It is a short, biography of their life, and just some basic information about the painting. Next, you'll do some picture study. So one of the ways I like to do the picture study is I like to let the children look at the picture. Then, because I have such a large family, I have one of them keep their eyes open while the rest of them close it. The one that has their eyes open, what they can do is describe the picture to the rest of the children, and that way they have the opportunity to try to picture it in their head. So I'm gonna start with Bella. The rest of you are gonna close your eyes, put your head down, and you're gonna describe the picture to them, okay? Oh, okay. Using words, what? using adjectives, she's it, and I want you guys to try to picture it in your head. Tell us about it, okay? So how can you describe that picture to where they can picture it better in their head? Um, there's a town, it has bright and dark colors. After we do that, then we move on to watching a YouTube video about either the artist, the painting, or some sort of information from that time period. Once we're done with the YouTube video, then we, uh, we discuss the questions that I've listed in the lesson plan. Our ultimate hope in God. So do we, are we going to have feelings of sadness or feelings of depression? No. Yes, we are. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, we are. Because there's going to be times in life when things don't go our way. Things go his way, go the way Vincent Van Gogh wanted to. Nope. Yeah, no. Okay, what do you mean? Let's, let's look at this particular statement. He had tried teaching, shop, working, shop work, and preaching all without success. Think that made him feel like a failure? Yeah, like he like 
of a loser. Kind of, yeah. But <laughs> do you think? Time. But do you think that that he was laughing about it? No. This gives you the opportunity to talk with your children about some the background behind the artist. With art, I have find that found that there is a lot of other topics that come up. And so this is a good opportunity to discuss why the artist made it, maybe was feeling like they did or what inspired the particular painting or art of some kind, um, their style, what was behind their style, what motivated them. And this is a good time to do that. Okay, so since I have such a large family, I decided to divide them into two teams. One team would do the art project on the second day and the other team and the other team would do the artist interview on the second day. Then they would switch for the third this day. This created a lot less congestion around the book or around the computer wherever I needed to, them to go. On the second day, they complete an artist interview and this is something that's included in the lesson plan and they'll look on the online to see if they can find the answers to these questions. Things like what year was the artist born? Because you're set, you're studying several different time periods during this time, and so that gives them a place to kind of put that artist in history. Um, there also is, you know, where is the painting today? Because that's always a, an interesting um, aspect of this. Where what happened to the painting? So we gotta wait for Google to load up. This is the false question. Vincent Van Gogh. Yep. On the third day, they're going to actually complete the art project. Now, I love this book because it gives you step-by-step -step instructions, or the child's step-by-step -step instructions, on what to do. In this case, they were doing a swirly landscape that was inspired by The Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. And so they, the, the book gave them step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, and they ended up with a pretty landscape picture. Here is one of them. Okay, so I have to mix every color. No, you don't mix every color. Ours is going to be darker than usual because of our blue paint. We need to add glue to the white. Huh? Do we need to add glue to the white? Yes, because it, the glue is making it thicker. The goal is to make a swirly landscape. So let me share with you some tips for making it easy to teach this. If you know me, I like to compartmentalize things. I like to gather everything once and then have it in here and ready to go. On page seven of your art treasury book, you will find a supply list that I just gathered as many things as I could. There are a few things I'm still on the hunt for, but those are farther in the book. So I gathered every, all my supplies together and I'm going to just put them in this bin so that when I am ready to teach, it's all here. Now, if you notice, I have a bin with a lid. Why would I have a bin with a lid, do you ask? Well, <laughs> I have seven children. <laughs> and they like to get into stuff. I don't care if you have one kid or seven kids. All kids like to get into stuff. And then my stuff disappears, especially with my artsy children. They like to experiment, and then I have nothing. So I'm putting all this all this in a bin with a lid and with instructions not to touch my stuff in my bin. And, and so I have everything in here on the day that I am teaching it and it's ready to go. And I will also keep my book in here as well. Okay, so I have one last tip that I wanna share with you. One of the most frustrating things for me is I have seven children who all want to keep their artwork and I wanna keep it for them. However, I don't have the space to do all of that. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to take the artist interview along with their painting that they made and I will three hole punch it, okay? And I like to take a binder and put it in the binder. So by the end of the year, I will have created somewhat of a keepsake or if you need to keep it for your for your um, records, you can do that. But they will have all their artist interviews plus the, the painting that was inspired by that artist for them to look over and to show family members or friends or whatever as like a show and tale. And that way it's organized and I don't have it like everywhere because that's what happens to me. Now let's just talk about the bonus activities. They're purely optional if you want your family to do them or if you don't. The first one was really fun because we went outside and we looked at the starry night that was a nice 
clear night and so we went outside and looked at the stars in our sky and compared them to the starry night by Vincent van Gogh and we just offered a little extra touch it took about five minutes um, but they were able to kind of experience and imagine it gave them an opportunity to kind of imagine the picture again in their heads and so it was just a fun little added touch what I love about teaching in this style is they notice things that they would have never noticed. I had one kiddo come up to me and said that he wanted to go to New York so he could actually see this particular um, painting because that's where it is right now. Another kiddo, um, we went to the library and they noticed that the ceiling tiles, the Starry Night was painted on the ceiling tiles and we had never even noticed that before. But they begin to notice things around them and that's what I love about it. And this particular study offers more than just art. I love history, so this is one of the things that attracted me to it because we can study a little bit of history with art and I'm all, not only capturing the attention of my children who are not artsy, but I'm capturing the attention of my children who are artsy with both angles. This unit study is offered exclusively from the Hobbs crew. And if you buy the book from us, you get it for free. So once you've completed your purchase, I will email you the PDF and you can get started as soon as your book arrives in the mail. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to hear what you have to say. Thanks, and I hope this will make your art a little this simpler. This abstract here again, reminding you to like, subscribe, and share our channel.